ハッピーホリデーズ from Bento Bureau いただきます Hello, gather around everyone. How's everyone doing this fine evening? Gather around the campfire with us, your fellow friends at Bento Bureau. Today's episode is our special Fiesta Bonanza, whatchamacallit, whatever you can also add to that Fiesta Festival Super Mega Bonanza Arena Bento Bureau episode of、uh, Holiday 2016. So. In Bento Bureau, if you're new to the show, we talk about Japan from an international perspective, students from all over the world.、Uh, and we also add that with a side dish of socio political discussion. But today, today is a special day. It is,、uh, wh- what is it exactly today? December 20. What is it? I forgot already. 29th. December 29th. Oh, who is that? Who is that that has just、uh, graced us with his.、Uh, Fabulous pre- presence, his fabulous voice. I'm always behind you, always watching you. I don't know why you're whispering right now. I don't think the mic can pick you up, but let's try to do this again. So today I'm joined with、uh, my good old buddy Jess from Guam. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays, Jess. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, buddy. Thank you very much.、Uh, and happy New Year to you, Buzz. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, as,、uh, as he mentioned, I'm Buzz and I'm from the Middle East. If you guys want to know, that's why we can't say Merry Christmas. No, no, it's fine. No offense here. We're all buddies, and I love the international scene, you、oh, know? Thank you. And、uh, last but、Ramadan. not least,、uh, actually, we're missing a few of the usual crowd today.、Uh, Ichi, our、uh, specialist from Thailand, has actually decided to、uh, attend the、uh, MUN. Oh, Japan Model UN. Yeah. The, the Japan Model UN in Tokyo happening right now.、Yes. In fact, recently he just won an award for being the most outstanding、uh, individual in the event. So,、uh, just a congratulations, Ichi. That's great. You know, we're very happy for you. Let's hope we can achieve that sort of greatness in the future. And Bastian is also、uh, spending his nice、uh, holiday with his family in Germany. So, today. Uh, I'm joined with only two people along with me, which of course I've already introduced Jess from Guam. But we have actually been graced with our special audio guy, Long Nguyen from Vietnam. Hell yeah! <laughs> Finally, I can have a chance to speak. And we're glad, we're very glad、Thank、to have you, you on the mic. Thank you for having me today. You know. How do you feel being on the other side of the speakers now, huh? Uh, I'm really scared right now. <laughs> and I, d- I don't know if I can pull through this, but oh, thanks to Bastian and Ichi not being here today, I can finally have a chance to speak. It's okay, it's okay. Are you feeling a little nervous? I'm fine, thank you. It's all right, you it's okay. Just relax, okay? Everything's going、today? well.、Uh, but just don't feel bad that you're wasting the audience's sp- precious time right now when they could be spending time with their family and friends. Anyway. So, yeah, it's,、uh, great to, it's great to have Long finally on the mic for once. And、uh, what are we going to talk about today, guys, in the absence of our fellow other members? Oh, who's the audio guy today? Oh, it's another Vietnamese guy. It's,、uh, surprise, it's, surprise. Uh, it's some guy called Lee. Uh, well, uh, I, I decided I'll just give you the credits, Lee. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Lee. Say thanks, Lee. I, we appreciate your support, Lee. All right, let's get back to business now. Thanks, Lee. Anyway. So, what are we going to talk about today, guys? So,、uh, we're going to keep a little more casual this time around. We're not going to talk about any of that political mumbo jumbo and that socio- sociology. I don't know what you might call it. We're going to just talk about our experience in the podcast, you know? When did we want to make this podcast in the first place? It's been. How long has it been now? We have had our first episode in. Well, we started back in April. April was That's it? That's when we were start coming up with ideas, ideas how、yeah. want to do、yeah. things and it's been a while, huh? Bringing up plans and yeah, so that is. Yeah, Th- it seemed like it was just yesterday that we were、uh, just coming up with a list of names、mm. trying to come up for the podcast and、yeah. we came up with a 
A series of interesting names. Uh, do you remember some of them? I, I remember Combination. Combination. Oh, yeah, Combination. That no, was pretty cringy. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys uh, didn't realize before, you know, what we were trying to strive for with the name Bento Bureau, it's, it's basically we're trying to join the theme of uh, b- living in Japan, talking about Japan, and the word Bureau in terms of, you know, relating to international affairs to some extent. Now, whether that works or not, whether you understood it, uh, that's uh, that's up to you, but uh, we hope it does work. You know, it, so- it sounded pretty good to us. But before we came up with that name, we came up with a few other silly names. Like we tried to relate the word kombini, which is the Japanese word for convenience store, and we tried to relate that to communication, which basically comes it coins the term communication. That's a good term, to be honest. I don't know why we dropped it. I'm pretty yeah, sure I'm no one would have subscribed to us if we called uh, ourselves communication. Yeah, that would have been a bad idea. Thank goodness we avoided that route, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we also had a few other names. Into Japan, I think. <laughs> yeah, we had worse ideas. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we were going to call ourselves Bento Bureaucrats, right? Yeah. <laughs> that oh, no, just that makes that us sound like a bunch of corrupt <laughs> politicians. Well, there is some prestige to that name. I mean, y- it's not every day you'll be called a bureaucrat, right? Listen, can you imagine saying, welcome to the bento bureaucrats? Yeah, we could record, the all, bento we bureaucrats. Could all record in suits. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, mm. it's a good thing we did there. Anyway, what are we going to talk about today? So, we decided that today we're going to keep it more casual than usual, if you haven't told already from our ridiculous banter. Today we're going to talk about our three favorite moments of, you know, living the podcast experience. You know, we've been doing this for six months, and to be fair, we haven't done as much as we could have. We're o- we've only done about eight episodes, but you know, uh, after the first season, uh, we decided we need to really restructure and uh, restructure the way we work and think about things from a different pers- perspective and we realize that we've got to focus a little more on quality over quantity so that's what that's the approach we're taking and yeah so today we're going to reminisce uh, about all the cringe-worthy moments uh, of this fabulous experience wonderful experience with you guys I'm really happy to be here today so yes. how about we start with uh, uh, our good old-fashioned uh, buddy from guam telling us uh, his third third favorite moment Mm, let's start from three to one okay my ironically favorite third favorite part of bento bureau was the first episode that we ever aired because um it was more personal as we um all introduced ourselves for the first time we talked about uh, how we ended up in japan a little bit about ourselves what our how we perceived japan yeah um, before we came here and personally for me it was uh enjoyable because um as uh, member, as the members of the group of the Bento Bureau, are all also my friends, it was nice to listen more about um, their personal stories and backgrounds and such. Hmm. Yeah, that was a great experience. Yeah, doing the first episode, I think we got uh, pretty much probably from our first season, it probably got the best reception actually. Yeah, and which is kind of ironic because that's the episode where we didn't really have a strong focus on anything. That was also one reason why I liked that uh, episode. Well, because um, you know we made a few mistakes here and there, but nonetheless it was fun. It was kind of like a uh, trial run, if you know what I mean. It was more lighthearted, definitely. Yeah. yeah. What did you think about listening to that episode from behind the mic, behind the scenes? Well, to be honest, um, I don't remember anything from that episode. I know that um, we spent a lot of time trying to come up with ideas <laughs> how to um, start introducing ourselves. But w- actually, um, if I remember correctly, uh, at that time we went a bit overboard. Um, I mean, we took a bit m- longer than we expected to mm. finish the episodes because each one has so much to share and each yeah, one has yeah, so yeah, yeah. such a great long story so many uh, amazing moments and so I think we went um, about 10-15 minutes overboard but actually it was a nice experience starting to get things kicking off things and and it was uh, also the first time that I got to sit at the back of the computer <laughs> and do all these technician uh, <laughs> uh, stuff. So it was a nice experience. And I think it's hard to top that moment when you start doing stuff later on. And what about your third favorite moment? Did oh, you take any notes? 
my third favorite Did moment. you think about it? Of course, of course. That was when we started doing stuff. And before we actually start recording stuff, we would go to the study booth. With every every few days we have all of our equipment just set them up and just put them everywhere in the st mm. study booth. Like we are actually recording something and then we just sit down and <laughs> be stupid and talk <laughs> about stupid stuff. I oh I yeah, that was just uh, <laughs> trying to get into the groove of speaking on a mic. Yeah, right. I remember that. We talked about uh, cats. Uh, cats. And well, Legend of Zelda. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that was your favorite moment. <laughs> Back then, when there was <laughs> Jawad, and I had a, had a blast talking with Jawad on the yeah. mic like two <laughs> idiots. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame that Jawad couldn't continue with us. You know, he went to America to study. You know, right, talking we'll about Jawad, having to share the story of Jawad to our listeners. So. Mm. Yeah, Jawad is uh, basically our uh, former delegate from India. He was a great uh, addition to the podcast, but unfortunately it was a limited time with him mm -hmm. as he had to go. He had bigger ambitions than, than this silly podcast and he went, ended up going to Willamette University in Oregon. So study there. Shall we have a moment of silence for our former member Jawad? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we'll get him on the podcast sometime mm -hmm. in the future. Hopefully. You hear that, Jawad? Please, please come back. We, mi we miss you. <laughs> okay, what do you think of cat? Cat? Yes. Oh. Uh, who's cat? No, cat in general. <laughs> yeah, I hate cats, you know. I don't like pets, actually. If I want to have a pet, I would prefer a squirrel. Let's be <laughs> 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 I see. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Racial slurs are kind of coming. Uh, there are a lot of cases of racial scar, uh, slurs going on with in our group. I think we should put a regulation for that. All right, that's great. Uh, my third one, my third favorite moment of uh, working on the podcast. Well, uh, I I was trying to. Obviously, I loved working on it behind the scenes, like. I worked on the music uh, for the show all the time, like the theme songs and everything, and that's always great fun, you know. I had to really channel my uh, creativity for that one. But in terms of what we covered on the show, uh, I think my third favorite one was uh, the talk with uh, Jessica and uh, Akili. Mm -hmm. I thought that was, while we did have some pretty major audio issues which kept me up working at nights, uh, trying to fix that audio, sorry if you guys noticed that was... Really, you know, I know it was subpar, but I hope you learned something from that episode. We definitely did. It was a very interesting conversation with them. We g managed to get a lot of insight on how uh, uh, people identify with being Japanese. Of course, uh, Jess is himself a uh, person who's half Japanese. His mother is Japanese. So it was definitely interesting to hear his insight in, in accordance to theirs. That was, that was definitely one of my favorite moments. Yeah, I, I felt that episode was quite insightful. It was um, pretty enlightening to me as well. Um, being half myself, um, mm. I did not grow up in Japan. I've only lived here for three years. But the only way I was um, influenced by Japanese tradition and culture was through my mother. And being as that we were in a foreign country, we were it was quite limited. But um, right now, I believe that uh, just because that you're half doesn't mean you have to choose one uh, ethnic, uh, I don't know, society to try and uh, conform or join. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, be yourself, essentially, as cliche as it sounds. Just exactly live, live the way you want to be. Be yourself, buddy. Thank you. I will. Believe in yourself. Yeah. By the way, I did not know that there was like a Brazilian community in Shizuoka. Yeah, uh, that was, was definitely really a big surprise yeah. for me. And, yeah. you know, doing research before we went into that, even like mm -hmm. we missed some <laughs> pretty yeah. interesting tidbits, you know, yeah. and we got we managed to learn a lot about that. Definitely. Yeah, it actually astounded me that Jessica has lived here for like almost 10, 10 years and she um, doesn't speak Japanese as mm. much. Like you, I didn't know that you can live in Japan without having to speak. Br like, yeah, really. Yeah, the language. Yeah. It goes to show, you know, Japan, even even though there's a, you know, obviously it's a very homogenous country, there is some very diverse areas, you know, so there's some difference in Japan. Yeah. And that was definitely one of my favorite moments. What about number two? Number two, uh, 
I would say getting the t-shirts for the Bento Bureau. Oh, you love those shirts, huh? Yeah, yeah. It, you love posing in that shirt? Yeah, if, as you, if you can see from our videos, I was posing quite uh, ridiculously. And, uh, well, for me, like, it doesn't, just because I have the shirt. Um, wait, wait, are you what? serious? No, I do like the t-shirts. No, I, I do. Is that your second favorite moment? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I could walk around at, like, say, Kawago. I could walk around in the city saying, like, wearing something that, you know, says, I'm a representative of the Bento Bureau. Do people and look at you like you're um, uh, insane? or? No, they, they just look at my t-shirt and say, oh, that's a nice t-shirt. Fun, fun fact, actually, when we were designing that logo uh, with the Bento Bureau, uh, those chopsticks, you can notice if you take a closer look, those chopsticks are actually placed on the side of the box. But before we came to that final design, well, we thought of the idea of uh, sticking the chopsticks into the globe itself. Mm -hmm. And later on, we uh, decided to refrain from that idea because it turns out, as Ichi pointed out to us, to us that it's actually some sort of sign for the devil in, Jap in uh, Japan. No, no, it's like... Um I think it's about the uh, Japanese funerals. I mean, if you stick oh, yes, chopsticks yes, 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 onto yes. A, like a mountain of rice, it, it's something related to funerals and death. Yeah, that, so, yeah, it um, was uh, related to death exactly. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so we changed death that. to the podcast. No, thank you. <laughs> what about your second one? My second one. Then it has to go back to the summer. December. Summer. The, the summer? summer when you guys were back in your country. You was in Qatar. I was. Bastion was in... Where was he? Doing? France? France, right. He was busy studying French in France. Yeah. So when we yeah. wanted to do the episode, we had to do it through Skype, right? Oh, yeah. So it was quite a hassle to do <laughs> uh, all of these uh, complicated technical um, process of hooking up the sound to yeah, from yeah, Skype to your... Um, uh, the red, big red magical box of us, and <laughs> definitely, I remember just sitting in my bed, uh, just with my pajamas on or something, speaking <laughs> to you guys. You guys probably had to do the real work, <laughs> the tech work, se setting everything well, we're up. We're basically uh, just sitting like <laughs> what we're doing right now. Oh yeah, I, I, I had chairs, and Ichi, Ichi, Ichi was too tall <laughs> for my chair <laughs> and my table. I can imagine he had to crouch down a few yeah, times. I was afraid he was going to get a hunchback or something. <laughs> But I someone I told I me that Ichi was falling asleep in that episode. Oh, no, that oh. was me. That was me. <laughs> oh, that was you? Yeah, I was struggling. Uh, I'm glad you were enjoying it. Everyone that. had to, um, <laughs> basically, everyone had to uh, sit in a... Wait, um, which, which episode was that? that Four was or five? That was about our research topic. Four the reso and episode five. Four and five. Was it four and five that we yeah, recorded two episodes. We did uh, two episodes. Oh wow, interesting. The second time, just were for almost fell as almost fell asleep. Yeah. I I don't know why I only remember one being made uh, over overseas. Either way, it, that was very yeah. interesting. And you know, uh, in fact, we managed to edit it to a certain point where you know it sounded convincing that we were sitting in the same room. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> the real implication is that um, one we get we don't have the chance to get together. We can. Um, use the experience to um, do a Skype mm. session and do it, maybe do an episode of that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, th I mean, now we know how it, how, it, how it goes, so definitely we'll probably do it in the future. And we, we use that mm. knowledge to speak to Professor Gregory Noble. So, so uh, is it possible that we can do episodes during the spring break when we all definitely of us should. We definitely yeah. should. We, cool. we should definitely. Mm. Um, but we do have to consider that we have to think about like four or five mm. different time zones. Let's talk about future plans on the end of the podcast instead. I think let's <laughs> go, go straight back to my second favorite. Okay. So my second favorite was uh, basically the, the, the episode on, uh, was it episode four or five, which we were doing the research? Schooling? Yeah, it was episode five, schooling. Or, uh, no, 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 no. it wasn't schooling. Schooling was on Japanese schools and we were talking about experiences uh, in there, in high school and stuff. So it was okay. either four no, or five. On the one where we did research for comparative social institutions. No, not no, compared. Com no, no, it was for uh, research, uh, uh, research uh, methods class. Oh, then that's episode five. Oh, interactions with Japanese. That yeah, Japanese yeah, that people one. And foreign people. Uh, where we where we did research on uh, Japanese students and foreign students in mm -hmm. Tokyo International University and their interaction between one another. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, I enjoyed that episode most because I realized the importance of knowing what the hell you're talking about. So, 
we learned it the hard way that when we were doing episodes coming off from episode one, two, th- two and three mainly, we were trying to, you know, get in over our heads. We're trying to talk about deep subjects where we're not really thinking straight about s- too seriously about what we're talking about. And in fact, we probably gave some false information now and then. And, you know, those are some cringe, cringeworthy moments I definitely regret. Mm-hmm. But uh, we definitely learned uh, and from if from some insight from uh, from one of our beloved professors, you know, <laughs> thanks, Professor Blackwood. You're great. You know, thank you. Uh, helps uh, helped us a lot. Happy holidays, buddy. Happy holidays. Yeah. And we got to the idea that, you know, we've been doing research on this subject for the whole semester. So why don't we use that to our advantage? Mm-hmm. And from that episode, we had a lot to say. We, ha- we actually knew what we're talking about and we could bring up so many resources and references at our disposal. So that was definitely uh, something to learn from. And uh, I think we're getting back in the groove, you know, lately. Uh, season two, I f- feel like it's been a big jump up, even though it's only been two episodes so far, this mm-hmm. one being the third. Uh, it's definitely, uh, there's there it's becoming a brighter season, I'd say. And I'd say look forward to the next episodes because it's just going to go up from here. Mm-hmm. I hope so. Eche, I'd like to know, uh, what, there was a time when we spoke about this, you described the difference in making Japanese friends with foreign friends, and you described making your experiences with making friends in your previous university in a very interesting way, comparing it to uh, layers. Can you talk more about that? Really, I talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, peeling the layers, as you said. I was fucking. I forgot about. It. Maybe he was <laughs> eating a banana during that time. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I've noticed about our episodes is that the episodes that involve more of a personal uh, level of um, information, like the one with uh, Jessica and Akili, and the interactions with uh, uh, foreign students and Japanese students, and our introductory episode, I think those th- the more personal content they're the most entertaining well for me anyways hmm. because um it's not really most we don't have to worry about the statistics and such we just have to, we can relate ourselves to these types of issues or situations that definitely makes sense i mean who would you rather listen to about a certain subject someone who's experienced it firsthand or someone who who's done a little bit of research every, you know on the side hmm. and that's definitely something we learned in the process and we're gonna go on from there mm. what about number one finally number one okay so the special number okay so today we had an assignment for bento bureau where we had to list the three our three favorite moments of the our experiences uh making the podcast what it is today so i actually had to think pretty hard about it because um i, I am quite lazy and uh after 10 minutes of thinking I realized like af- you know what like think about it we had s- we made bento bureau out of something like something so small we just made it as like a little side project but we never I never thought that it would expand into something this big like we have you know bento bureau merchandise we have our website well we don't really sell it yeah. but <laughs> we can sell it if we want to no one's gonna Who's buy gonna it, buy it? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. We, we can but we can have I a know what you mean I mean we yeah. have like 170 people on our Facebook now? Yeah, that's quite big. This, you know, that's definitely something to be proud of. I feel really humbled yeah. you know, from your support. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that it, we made it as friends all together, it just kind of makes gives you a more uh, intimate relationship with the, mm. pro- the project itself. Uh, yeah, and I think the greatest thing is is that we get to learn a lot of things in the, f- in the process. You yeah. know, uh, we speak to a lot of people. I mean, I know we haven't spoken to much people outside of our group so far only uh, excluding professor gregory noble and the other two mm-hmm. but uh definitely in the future i feel like this is going to be great you know we're going to mm-hmm. talk to so many people and we don't want to spoil it all so we want you to keep listening we hope you look forward to what we have in store because we got some ideas mm-hmm. we got some ideas i think what about you tech guy of course the one and only episode where we talk to Professor Gregory Noble. <laughs> Hell yeah! That was a roller coaster yeah. of emotion. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, and we I can think talk about that all day. That's the <laughs> only episode where we spent months, literally months, preparing for. 
It was, yeah. So it was yeah. our first time talking to a profession, professor, someone who's very um. Um, He's I got a lot to talk yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. I, so if I, I, if I had to estimate, it'd be like maybe seven percent us talking, ninety percent Gregory Noble <laughs> doing the talking. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. He definitely did not uh, mm. save us mm. any room to ask any questions on the side. He yeah. answered every single question, and you know what? That's great. You know, mm. he had a lot to talk about, and we mm. learned a lot. But. You know, uh, I w- it would be an understatement to say that <laughs> I was pretty nervous. Oh yeah, no, you can feel you there was so much tension <laughs> in that recording. <laughs> Ooh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ross. Thank you very much, Professor. Have a good evening. Whew. Wait, wait, wait! Don't end it. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> Jesus, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> what a sh- what a ship! <laughs> Okay, don't worry. It's okay. it's I mean, it's your first time. Everyone of us has made the we mistakes will, we in this. Black <laughs> we were all, yeah, we were all pretty tense. And I still remember that day we started at one. We met up at one. We just sit there and doing. Start just reading over, over, over. And it was over. a disaster. Oh, we went over the reading. There yes. were so many things that went wrong that day. We well, were we missing can. equipment. Things got stolen. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to rush back home and take some extra stuff. <laughs> we had to set things up. We had. I had to worry about my introduction. No, I and I still messed it up. Meanwhile, <laughs> I, meanwhile, I was at my part-time job. In yeah. fact, that's my number one favorite moment too. Is yeah. Talking with Gregory Noble and uh, everything on that day was just fantastic. We mm. made that stupid video of us just uh, yeah, preparing. Yeah, I, I enjoy filming you guys doing nothing productive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it just... Uh, you guys, if you've listened to the episode, if you haven't yet, please do. I mean, it's mm. definitely the one I would recommend. I think we would all recommend it wholeheartedly. You are definitely going to learn a lot about Japanese politics from Professor Gregory Noble. I highly suggest. Um, I'll tell you a fun fact about that episode, the making of that episode. Uh, it wasn't, maybe it sounds uh, that, uh, maybe it sounds like we did a pretty good job keeping everything uh, on track, but mm-hmm. that's not actually the truth. Actually, uh, there were a few uh, screw-ups every now and then, especially on my part. For example, getting uh, some information about him incorrect. Uh, and him, uh, you know, basically correcting me, but rigorously, you know, just uh, he corrected me nicely, uh, but it just it just felt like such a, a heavy toll to take <laughs> b- from from a professor as you know amazing as him, as smart and intelligent as him. Obviously, you know, if you watch the video, you can see me all exhausted and <laughs> and <laughs> and lifeless after the episode, yeah. you know, but. Uh, I cut that part out of the episode, of course. Maybe so none of you will be able to hear. Really? Maybe you can have like a little blooper section where, you know, we can show the audience all our uh, mistaken But recordings. it's too much! <laughs> <laughs> too much. <laughs> I don't think Buzz can take it for another time. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Mm. Yeah, that, w- that was definitely it. And Mental Bureau, yeah. 2016, the start of our podcast. Yeah, first year. Wow, Here's to it. 2017. What's the plan for 2017, guys? What is uh, what are we gonna introduce to the podcast in 2017? Well, obviously, we have planned to bring in more professors who uh, specialize in Japanese politics and international relations. Mm. That's our um, plan for I think at least for the next uh, month, next two months. That's what we'll try to get going. Hold on a moment. Hang on, what's going on right now? What's going on? What's going on here? Someone has just barged into Bento Bureau headquarters with no invitation. Who is this person? Who are you? A girl. (gasps) What? What is this? What is a girl? A girl in Bento Bureau? Uh, what? Bento Bureau has a woman, a female, find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> How about you introduce yourself? 
girl. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, this is our new me newest member. We are so proud to introduce our first female member to the podcast. We are so ecstatic to have you. It is our beloved friend from Vietnam. Please introduce yourself. You made it more nerve-wracking than it should be. <laughs> Listen, we're all nerve-wrecked right now. Even though it's a holiday special, there's no escaping the nerve-wreck, the nerve-wrecking uh, experience. Um, so thank you for your introduction, Buzz. Um, hello everyone. My name is Hazel. Hello, Hazel. Um, like Buzz mentioned, I'm from Vietnam. I'm second year student here in Tokyo International University. Um, yeah. And like uh, all the members in Bento Bureau, I major in international relations. So that's why I'm very interested in joining you guys in this project. And when Buzz mentioned that, um, maybe, you know, Bento Bureau needs um, this perspective from the opposite gender. Um, we of definitely do. Yeah. For members, <laughs> I guess I'm the closest thing to a girl that you can find. <laughs> you are closer than anything we could find. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very excited to join you guys. I mean, I've been um, a listener, an, an, how you call it, an audience. A follower. A, a follower, patron. a stalker. <laughs> a patron. Yeah. Since your very first days, very first episodes, um, I'm friends with you guys um, in real life and has been um, listening to you guys tenti ten tentatively. 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 Sorry, English is not my native language. No, it's okay. Your <laughs> English cool, is cool. fantabulous. Mm. Thank you, Buzz. That's very nice of you. So how does it feel being a Bento Bureau member at last? Um, it feels... I don't know how it's called, but I mean, I have been... I can say like a little bit inside of Pencil Bureau, I know <laughs> stuff. <laughs> oh, you know the insider information. I know, right? I'm selling them on eBay or something. <laughs> <laughs> but or yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, joining Pencil Bureau means a lot to me. Um, it's a great chance for me to learning, um, to actually doing something um, the closest to a project, like a serious project that I have ever done in my life. And so it's definitely something very special to me. That's great. You know, I'm glad you managed to maintain that posture speaking there while he was creepily trying to take pictures of you. Mm. Uh, You've never seen a girl in your life long. So uh, how about we talk about a little bit about why we thought Hazel is good for the role. She's, it's, it's not that we just chose her because we tokenism. know her in real life or tokenism, uh, as a sociologist would say. Um, but... We generally think that she is uh, a very, very intelligent, probably more intelligent than most of us. Uh, and we definitely think that she has something to contribute to the podcast. She's taking lots of uh, courses in the university that have uh, a lot to do with uh, Japanese politics and, soci uh, and society and sociological uh, talks. So she definitely has the knowledge. And I would definitely say that she is much more uh, determined and dedicated than some of our members right now. You're making fun of me? I love you. Thank you. You know, the great thing is you're a good speaker. Mm. You know, you can always get away with it. Yeah. No, I'm kidding, you work hard, but I'm pretty sure she'd wor work harder than us. Yep. You hey, know? hey, I will still try and manage to, you know, get my way through in 2017 as well. Yeah. At least you made the three things you liked most about Bento Bureau. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Biggest contribution to this project I ever made. I was very surprised that he actually like wrote down something. <laughs> because um, as much as I know him, I, I thought he would just probably like, I don't know, think of something in his mind and then just mm. rant about it. Hey, I could be efficient if I try. <laughs> so... I guess we're closing in to the end of our episode. I mean, we decided we don't want it to be as long as usual today because we don't really have anything concrete to talk about. And hopefully you didn't close the the podcast before you got to meet our newest member. Uh, we would definitely inform that on the Facebook page as well, just in case you got so tired of our podcast. But 
uh, you can definitely expect uh, from 2017 onwards, we're going to go back to the regular format where we're going to definitely have uh, a solid theme. And don't worry, we have lots of ideas. And we're going to utilize uh, Hazel's expertise in any way we can. But yeah, I'm excited to contribute as much as I can to the podcast because um, obviously you guys have done a great job mm. Mm, building something from from scratch, from technically from scratch and um, achieve a lot until this episode. Mm. And so, um, of course, I would want to make it bigger, greater, um, try to bring it to mm, as many people as I can and continue to do the great things that you guys are doing. And you surely will. Uh, we definitely look forward to that. You want to tell them about your uh, hobbies? Are you are you referring to my Gryffindor scarf? Uh, well, I didn't mention that, but I, uh, I just thought maybe the audience would like to know, you know, something interesting about you on the side. Well, yeah, as just like half of the nerds of my generation, I'm a Potter head. Um, that's a way to call a Harry Potter fan, and I'm a Gryffindor. Um, so that's the best house. That's uh, the best uh, I'm house. not sure if all of our audience uh, knows what exactly a Gryffindor is. Let's just is say is let's just say it's the greatest house in Hogwarts, the magic mm. school. Well, we have Buzz here. Um, I met you do the test on <laughs> the quiz on Pottermore and you are a, a Ravenclaw, which I means I you're pretty a, smart. I don't even know what a Ravenclaw is. I like Harry Potter, but not as much as you. Well, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I can say that. Um, but besides Harry Potter, of course, if I like Harry Potter, I like reading books. Um, but lately, I've been kind of neglected with my readings <laughs> well definitely you have a lot to read in school so i mean that yeah, takes up that, most of the time you grew up in a village right i'm not um, i didn't grow up in a village i i grew up um in a small city um about a hundred kilometers south to ho chi minh city um it's called Phuong Tao. um it's a, it's a, a coastal <laughs> is that how you say it Phuong Tao. Okay, I, I can't say that. Well, it's Vietnamese. Nobody can <laughs> say it except for the Vietnamese people. But yeah, it's a small city. It's, it's, um, it's suburban. There aren't many things there. It's kind of like a tourism city. So kind of like warm, but not as beautiful. And it's not an island. Wait, are you saying Vung Tao is not as beautiful as Guam? I'm not saying that. I take that back. Mm. Vung Tao is beautiful. Wait, so Hazel, uh, what, what brought you to t uh, Tokyo International University? Why did you pick this university? Uh, like, why did you want to study in Japan, of all places? Well, the idea of going abroad for my further education came pretty late in my high school year. And by the time I decided that I would go to another country to study, um, we didn't have enough financial capability to go to, you know, the UK or the US. So, and I also want to like kind of save the better places um, for if I ever want to go to, to do a master degree or something like that. So I decided to go, you know, somewhere in Asia and Japan was definitely um, top of the list because even in my city, a small suburban city, um, Japanese companies are investing a lot in Vietnam. And also I feel like um, I want to study another language since, you know, English is very popular right now. And if you hope to get a better job um, later in life, I think a third language would help a lot. And Japanese is suddenly a language worth learning. Mm. Interesting. So, what is your opinion on the Japanese language so far? Like, how is your Japanese? Why do you have 
three alphabets <laughs> wide. <laughs> Why? Okay, let's just uh, uh, let me ask the fir I last like question. I like kanji. I really like kanji. I feel like I'm like drawing, not exactly writing anything. <laughs> and I don't know. I like kanji when I can read it, <laughs> but when I can't read it, uh, it's not very nice. Yeah, I hate like writing it. It's the worst. Oh, writing is. Just, I gave up on yeah, that a long yeah, time ago. Yeah. I mean, we're, at, we're at a digital age. We can always like just text everything. So who needs mm. to write these days, right? <laughs> Isn't it that like a lot of the Japanese uh, teenagers nowadays actually don't know how to mm -hmm. write a, lo uh, a lot of kanji? Well, I don't have any statistics, but uh, from what I've heard, uh, some uh, people of maybe our generation in Japan, they actually remember less kanji characters than, mm. say, the older generations do. I mean, funny that you mention kanji because I, I'm very interested in kanji too um, for the fact that many Vietnamese words are still like sino Vietnamese, which means it has the meaning mm. from Chinese. And for example, like the easiest example would be names. Um, take my name, for example. My name is Hai in Vietnamese, and that actually has a kanji, is the xiawase. Kanji. Same with long, right? Yeah, long means dragon, so do you? The mm. kanji for dragon. Mm. Mm. So you can basically, most most of the time, you can basically find the kanjis for Vietnamese names. And there's also uh, lots of similar words. Uh, oh, many yeah. of my Vietnamese friends have Definitely. told me. Th there's definitely lots of uh, similarities in words. There are words that sound basically 90% the same. Mm, that's so interesting. Yeah. You're all connected. I know, right? The Chinese are everywhere. Anyway, so I think that we pretty much covered everything. You want to say something, Long? Come, come here, buddy. All right. We'll come to the Long questionnaire, Hazel. Are you ready to... Be there's challenged. a questionnaire. <laughs> I didn't yeah, sign up for this. There is a questionnaire. <laughs> Think of it more like your initiation. A very quick ask and answer questionnaire. Okay. Less than 30 seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. First one. Dog or cat? Dog. Beach or mountain? Beach. Sushi or ramen? Sushi. Dog or cat? Dog. <laughs> Would you rather fight 100 horse-sized ducks? Or one duck-sized horse? I guess one duck-sized horse would be easier. Would you like your legs as long as your finger? Or your finger as long as your leg? That's a hard one. <laughs> Either way, I'm going to look ridiculous. So let's just go with small legs. Finger-sized legs. Harambe or Navy SEAL? What? <laughs> Uh, this is what happens when we let him uh, go on Reddit. This is why. Long. This is why he's the sound guy. <laughs> we don't let him talk. <laughs> okay, thank you, Hazel, for uh, participating in the qu long questionnaire, and see you in t one thousand years. Yeah, I would have broke down after. Actually, we have three. Uh, we have uh, other plans uh, with long. We have other uses uh, to put long for. Mm. Uh, we were thinking since long has uh, recently done quite a lot of uh, research on uh, uh, President Donald Trump and the TPP, we were thinking that would be one of the episodes that we we could highlight. We could talk about uh, Japan-US relations. We already spoke about that briefly with uh, <coughs> Professor Gregory Noble, actually, on the end of his podcast. You could hear about what he had to say on the end of that. Uh, but definitely long. In fact, he won a presentation contest uh, on this subject. So he, I think, I think he knows what he's talking about. So let's put him to the test sometime soon, mm -hmm. shall we? I'm going to make a question there out of that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, finally, we can uh, have a woman's perspective uh, on the matter, too. So that's going to be great. Uh, and let's end it here, I guess. Um, we don't really have anything else to say. Um, what I would say is that if you're interested or you have anything to contribute to the podcast or you would like to speak on the podcast, please uh, send us a message. You can email us at thebentobureau at gmail.com or even just send us a Facebook message or whatever. Every, anything's fine with us. But we're always looking forward to trying different things and uh, different approaches to this podcast. We want this podcast to evolve, not just with us, but with the audience. So 
please, if you have anything, any suggestions, any ideas, or you want to participate, just hit us up. So that's all we got to say. And we ho hope you look forward to another year of Bento Bureau. And for the years to come, maybe. Goodbye, every listeners. Uh, if you've been with us until now, I'd like to express my sincere appreciation. And until next time, I shall be back to my computer. <laughs> See you all next year. Thank you, Long. And uh, thank you, everyone, talking to me tonight, especially you, Hazel, our new member. Thank you for joining us. How about Good you? Uh, thank you. How would you How would you like to cue us out? Oh, I finally got to do that. Yes. How do I do this? You just clap, and then some magical spirit fairy comes out. And then you just follow the words. Okay. Which is Yeah, how about you try <laughs> that one more time? One more time, one more time. Everybody ready? Go. Go so Samadeshta. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy holiday.